Hello everybody and welcome back to the ASUS North America YouTube channel. This is JJ once again and we're bringing you guys a brand new motherboard overview. Specifically, we're going to be talking about the ASUS Z87 and Deluxe Series motherboard. Now, uh, for this video in itself, we are, of course, as always, going to be covering a couple of different things, including a physical overview in terms of the motherboard itself and topology, features and functionality, considerations for you guys when you're going to be making your purchases as well as the build, and kind of where the Deluxe sits in relation to our entire motherboard stack, so in relation to TUF, ROG, and even our WS product lineup. And of course, always, we're going to touch on the accessories that come in include inside the box. Now, just as kind of a general note, everything that we're going to be discussing for this board is going to be applicable for the Z87 Deluxe as well as the Z87 Deluxe Dual. Uh, the only difference will be that the Dual will feature integrated Thunderbolt connectivity and come included with an NFC breakout box module. For you guys that are interested more so uh, finding out about the NFC breakout box module, make sure to check out our video on NFC. So from here, we're going to go ahead and take a look and see what comes included with the Z87 Series Deluxe. All right, guys, we've gone ahead and unboxed everything that comes included with the Deluxe board. So let's take a look at the included accessories. First up, we've got an included support DVD. This has all our support software, including our system utilities, such as AI Suite 3, which allows you to access uh, four-way optimization software. So make sure and install that, as well as got everything in relation to all your drivers. You can go over to support.asus.com for the latest version of the software. Uh, we have a quick setup guide and kind of feature guide that gives you more information about four-way optimization, dual intelligent processors for, and our Wi-Fi Go utility as well as the Wi-Fi Go uh, module itself. So make sure to check that out for some additional information. Uh, from there, we have the general manual, which gives you pretty much all the specifications, some feature breakdown, and a lot of information in relation to how to set up and configure your system. So some good stuff there. Okay, from there, let's uh, take a look at these guys. So here we have a three SATA 6G cables, uh, pretty straightforward. These are two included inside each one for a total of six, and that's because this chipset has natively six SATA 6G ports built into the PCH, uh, which is an upgrade from the previous, uh, which only offered two. Uh, the board does feature a total of 10 ports though. Okay, we've got our uh, Wi-Fi antenna. So this will be to go ahead and allow you to improve the reception as well as the throughput for the integrated Wi-Fi Go module. That gives you 811 AC, dual band, as well as Bluetooth 4.0 support. Uh, the base is fully magnetic as it was in previous designs. And this actual little unit itself supports three different uh, rotations and adjustment positions to go ahead and allow you to uh, have the best flexibility for performance and positioning. You've got your Q connectors, which are color-coded for the board itself. Uh, one being, of course, for the primary leads like the power, the reset, power LED, hard drive LED, things like that. And then another one for the USB port. You've got your Q shield. Q shield, of course, make sure to install this before you install the motherboard. And this is uh, going to go ahead and be our Q shield, uh, which goes ahead and minimizes any electromagnetic interference that comes through the chassis. Plus, it's a soft, nice padding. And we've got also an SLI ribbon. Uh, so that's for you guys that are going to be running multi-GPU setups. For you guys that are doing Crossfire, keep in mind that the Crossfire bridge comes included with Crossfire-enabled GPUs. So from here, let's actually take a look at the motherboard. All right, guys. So here you can see that we've gone ahead and unboxed the Deluxe 4. You can see that it's featuring an entirely new gold uh, color aesthetic. So uh, it's got a great bright contrast in terms of uh, working with uh, chassis out there in the marketplace. So we'd love to hear your feedback on the ID. So moving past that, let's go ahead and take a look at the topology and the connectivity that we have here on the board. So starting from the top here, we've got an 8-pin CPU power connection. Of course, you can see in this tire area, we have a high-performance heat sink assembly. Uh, this features a centered heat pipe that directly goes underneath the VRM section, so that helps to keep things really cool, really reliable, helps to ensure the best long-term stability. You're going to, of course, see tons of capacitors sprinkled out through the entire motherboard. These capacitors specifically, along with all the other ones you're going to see on the board, are 5K rated. That means that's over twice what competitors in the marketplace are using when they're only using 2K rated capacitors. And on top of that, all the inductors, or what some people refer to as the chokes, are full high-performance, fully molded inductors that have a very high level of amperage output. Um, they're overall really high quality power solutions, including also the, the MOSFETs that we have on board that helps you ensure that you're going to have great overclockability, great stability, and overall great power delivery implemented here on the, on the motherboard. Now moving past that, we can see here that we've got some fan connectivity. We have two optimally placed four pin uh, PWM fan headers. Now those four pin fan headers along with every five, uh, excuse me, along with every fan header you're going to see on the board fully support both three pin and four pin control. Uh, and they can be configured from within the UEFI or within software in Fan Expert or AI Suite 3. Now keep in mind for this one primary uh, header here, this one actually features a special depression switch, uh, which allows it to automatically detect three pin or four pin based fans. 
so that's an additional nice touch. Of course, we got four memory banks color-coded and makes things easy for you installation-wise. This board has been clocked and validated up to 2800 on the DRAM side, but in our internal testing, we haven't been able to hit four DIMM 3000 base frequencies. So just in terms of uh, strong DRAM support, you also got great CPU overclocking support. So either which way, Deluxe is going to get you taken care of there. Now, moving over here, you're going to see that there's a little Memo K button. That's a single one-touch button to allow you to go ahead and resolve memory-related issues, whether it's from new memory that's being installed with older memory, possibly aggressive overclocking, a number of different variables. Press the button to press it. It will automatically load in some fail-safes and get you going. Right next to that, you're going to see that there's a DRAM LED. That's part of our QLED diagnostic system. There's four of them, one right here, another one by the CPU socket, another one by the VGA, and another one down here by the serial ATA devices. That's a quick and easy visual way to let you know if you're having problems with posting the system, where you might want to take a look at and see uh, if you can go ahead and maybe reseat that item, get your system back up and running. Moving past that, we've got, of course, a 24-pin power connection, two more uh, chassis fan headers, we then have an uh, internal front USB 3 header. This fully supports our USB 3 boost technology as well for improved performance. You got 10 SATA 6G ports. These top four right here are from an add in controller, two AS Media 1061 SATA 6G controllers. These are fully bootable as well as supporting hot swap. And then you have six SATA 6G ports that are directly provided by the PCH or the chipset natively. We move down from there, we've got TPU and EPU switches. TPU and EPU switches are for you guys that want some hardware-centric controls at either maximizing power consumption, reducing thermals, or overclocking the system. TPU switch in the first position is going to give you a moderate overclock to optimally design for the basic retail fan cooler. You switch it over into the second spot, you're going to want to ideally use some form of a moderate-based CPU cooler. Nothing high-end, but it's going to be, definitely have to be better than the standard, and that'll give you a default overclock of 4.250 uh, gigahertz. EPU switch will not affect performance. It will only provide less voltage to the CPU, but it'll go ahead and help to reduce power consumption as well as to go ahead and reduce temperature slightly under load. We move down from there. We've got, of course, our onboard uh, front chassis header connections. So that's going to be things for like the power button, reset, hard drive LED, things along those lines. Directly above that, we've got a special header that ties into the direct key button. So this header, if you don't want to go ahead and run your restart button from your chassis to the front chassis header, you can run to there and then that reset button will turn into a direct UEFI button. So if you ever want to just boot straight into the UEFI, don't worry about hitting the delete key. Just connect it to there, hit the reset button, and you're good to go. You've got another fan header here, the direct key button. For you guys that are using the system outside of a chassis or you're directly maybe doing some setup, want a quick access to the UEFI, hit that button. Two more USB 2 front headers. We have a clear CMOS button. Then we have an onboard debug LED uh, system. Of course, uh, this is going to be optimal for you guys that do want to reference the manual or look up more complex debug codes. And maybe you don't want to use the more basic of a more visual QLED diagnostic system. You got a TPM header there for advanced security support. Onboard power button, onboard reset button. And then from there, of course, front HD audio connection for your chassis uh, front headphone outputs. Now, chipset on here in terms of audio-wise is updated to the brute new ALC1150 audio codec. It's a nice jump up in terms of the actual specification, so better quality sound, and still features our DTS Ultra 2 PC or DTS Connect, a software package. So we move up from here, and lastly, we can see in terms of connectivity, one additional fan header and one way to just go ahead and reconfirm on all the fan headers that we see here. They all support 3-pin and 4-pin control and are fully adjustable from the UEFI as well as the software. Next up, we're going to go ahead and take a look at PCIe connectivity before we jump to the I.O. So moving things along, guys, let's go ahead and recap what we have here in terms of internal PCI Express connectivity. So you see there's no legacy support here, so no PCI uh, slots. We have a BI-1 right here, and then we have a full electrical BI-16. This is going to be BI-16 Gen 3. Then we have another BI-1, BI-1, and then we have another physical BI-16, but electrically 8. This board fully supports quad SLI as well as quad crossfire, so that's going to be two uh, dual GPUs enabled in terms of a two-card configuration, and of course, standard SLI or crossfire support. If you're going to run those configurations, these two slots will run in BI-8 Gen 3. Keep in mind that BI-8 Gen 3 is equal 
people to buy 16 Gen 2, so then more than enough bandwidth for you. you got another buy one right here, and then of course you're gonna have another electrical buy eight. Uh, and this slot will vary depending on the bandwidth that's inside in the UEFI and the amount of controllers that you're using. Now lastly, before we go ahead and cut away to the I.O. section, we do wanna make a note that one of the special features of the Deluxe board compared to, let's say, um, our other boards like the Pro or the Dash A uh, that you might be taking a look at, or even some of the other boards out there in the marketplace, is that the PLX chip that we have incorporated in here is going to give the board the ability to run more simultaneous lanes at what time. Long story short, what that means is if you're going to be running multiple GPUs with also using supplemental controllers such as maybe two Ethernet ports, supplemental SATA 6G ports, you're going to be able to maintain all that bandwidth at one time, as opposed to potentially having one of the controllers shut off once you start to start to use as much connectivity as the board might be able to offer. So with that, let's go ahead and move past here and take a look at what we have on the I.O. Okay, so moving along here to the back I.O., you can see we've got tons of connectivity. The blue ports denote that we have USB 3 versus the non-blue ports being USB 2. So we have a total of six USB 3 ports. Those support our USB Plus charger technology as well as USB 3 Boost. We have a mini DP port there. We have a full-size DP port. And then we have an HDMI port. You can drive multiple displays via the integrated iGPU if you're not going to run a discrete graphics card. You've got an optical output that works with that ALC 1150 codec that we have on board, and this guy would be able to offer you that DTS Connect Ultra 2 PC software package. We've got a USB BIOS flashback button, which is a great feature uh, that the board supports the ability to directly update or recover the UEFI chip uh, without the need to have either CPU, memory, or graphics card installed. All you're going to need is PS, uh, PSU standby power connected to the board, and you can go ahead and directly update the UEFI by just installing the file on there, putting it to, uh, to the corresponding USB port and holding that button down. It's also a great way to recover uh, your UEFI if maybe you get too aggressive with overclocking or you get like a surge spike or a sag or something something like that. We've got our new updated wireless module that's built on board here. This uh, offers direct connection to PCI Express, offering very high level of throughput. So this is going to be 802.11ac along with Bluetooth 4.0 support. Uh, that means that you're going to get also dual band in terms of its AC, so 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. It's a 2 by 2 solution. In our testing, we've been able to go ahead and almost reach 450 megabits of throughput. So exponentially faster actually than the previous generation dual band that we had on our previous model Deluxe. Uh, in addition to that, we can see here four USB 2 ports, uh, the, uh, four of those six backplane USB 3 that we touched on earlier, and then two gigabit Ethernet ports. One of these is actually the brand new Intel i-series network controller, so that's going to give you the best performance, lowest CPU utilization, and the most robust management options. And from there, you have the most up-to-date Realtek uh, 8111 GR series Ethernet controller. And these uh, actually support as well as our network i-control software, which allows you to pack your priority, get your better performance with whether it's downloading, browsing, gaming, uh, or streaming. You can go ahead and adjust that all via AI Suite 3. And then from there, you've got analog audio outputs. So that recaps what we have here on the back. Let's go ahead and wrap things up. All right, guys, so we've uh, gone ahead and taken you through some of the feature set that's featured on the motherboard, as well as some of the connectivity and the overall topology. So wrapping things up, you know, one of the most common questions that we get is what's kind of one of the differences between the Deluxe and maybe, say, one of our other series of boards, uh, as well as kind of what should I be considering if I'm going to be considering the Deluxe for building a brand new Z87 system. So first off, the Deluxe pretty much is for you guys that are looking for the best of the best in terms of our connectivity and feature set all integrated onto the board, um, minus maybe some of the specialized audio technologies that we're going to have on ROG series motherboards. You've got pretty much everything you could ask for here, an extensive number of USB 3 connectivity, all our performance-oriented storage technologies, A2.11 AC, Bluetooth, high-performance VRM, even overclocking. Uh, from an overclocking perspective, this along with all of our channel SKUs, even all the way down to Dash A, they're going to all be able to overclock this platform comfortably to what the limits of what cooling can provide for. So most of the time, it's going to be 4.8 gigahertz. As I said, the memory, no problems driving up to 2,800 speeds, which is going to be pretty much the limit here on the marketplace that you can purchase. So for you guys that are looking for the best of the best in terms of connectivity, Deluxe is going to fit that bill, and you really kind of want to future-proof your build consideration. If you don't need as much connectivity, or maybe you want to focus in more on gaming, maybe more specialized forms of monitoring, then, of course, you could take a look at some of other boards, whether it's in the ROG, the Tough Line, or maybe even some of the boards that are actually underneath the Deluxe SKU. Um, 
In terms of one feature that we didn't cover here uh, that the board will also support is it will have the ability to support what's called NFC Express, which is via a little breakout box that you'll be able to connect to the USB port. And that will actually give you the ability to use your tablet or your smartphone to be able to do quick NFC related functions, whether it's logging into your system, doing file transfers, or even launching applications. So that's a really cool level of functionality that you'll have available to you on the Deluxe Series through the purchase of an accessory box. As always, if you guys have any questions, comments, feedback, we'd love to see them here on the page. Drop them in the comment section. I'll do my best to get back to you when I can. Uh, you can also feel free to hit us up at our North American Facebook page or our North American Twitter page. And if you guys enjoyed the video, please make sure and like it and subscribe. And as always, thank you for watching the video.